Hello, welcome to Blogging Heads. I am Bill Black. I'm a PhD candidate in history at Rice University, and I've written for the oh, uh, Washington Post and the Atlantic and Vox. And today I'm talking to Edward H. Miller, Ted Miller. You are a professor at Northeastern University's College of Professional Studies. Um, you got your PhD at Boston College, is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. You're also author of the book Nut Country, um, yes. Right Wing Dallas and the Birth of the Southern Strategy, which came out a couple of years ago from the University of Chicago Press. Um, and today we are talking conspiracy theories. Um, and we should issue a disclaimer that we are not. Um, conspiracy theorists uh are <laughs> we use our tin foil to preserve food in the fridge um, oh that's right yeah not plenty, not as, plenty of yeah. fluoride running through my pipes <laughs> fluoride in my toothpaste but uh, conspiracy theories are a, a historical phenomenon i i think uh pretty important in our culture and, and our politics um yeah and, and they have a history. They don't just come out of nowhere. And um, there are conspiracy theories. Yeah. Conspiracy theories have happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean just actual conspiracies have happened? Yeah, oh, conspiracies have happened, yes. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what would you sort of cite as an example of, of uh, something that was really thought of as a crazy theory that ended up being more or less true? Well, I think the idea that uh, the Ameri American government officials were uh, experimenting with LSD and giving LSD to unknown individuals uh, through a program uh, in the, in the uh, 1950s uh, and the 1960s. That, that is um, quite remarkable. It turned out something that turned out to be true. That uh, MK Ultra. Yeah. Is that part of MK yeah. Ultra? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty remarkable that the um, during the 1970s, uh, President Nixon was was spying on um, thousands of, of individual um, Americans and, and looking at their their tax files. And uh, this, of course, came out to be true. Um, the um, so there's a number of things. The. Um, the surveillance of civil rights activists in the uh, early 1960s that came out with the church committee in the 1970s. That was, that was a, um, a surprising uh, conspiracy that turned out to be the case. But Have you but, seen uh, the documentary Wormwood? I just watched it. I just watched it. I oh, thought it was great. Yeah. I, I saw it as well. I, if it's, it's probably not spoiling too much because I think it's, it's yeah. in the first episode it's already getting revealed but it's it's a really fascinating film it's by errol morris who yeah. kind of invented the uh you know kind of procedural investigation documentary that is so popular on netflix with the the thin blue line yeah and and with wormwood he's looking at a famous case of a of frank olson uh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who was one of these, I think he was working for the army uh, and jumps out of the hotel building in New York. And it, it comes out in the church after the church committee comes out that he was given uh, LSD and that this was part of a bad trip. And then what though, what comes out in the documentary, at least is you're pretty well persuaded by the end that that itself was a kind of cover-up and that it's quite possible that Olson was actually executed because yeah. he uh, was becoming a dissident. He, he suspected the army was doing a biological warfare in Korea. Um, uh, so it, it just, uh, that, that the conspiracy theory being revealed was in itself a... A, just a, uh, a facade for something yeah. else 
was pretty yeah. remarkable. And, and the fact that the person who who uh, didn't verify but suggested that that probably is the case, uh, Seymour Hirsch has been so active in uh, uncovering uh, the nefarious activities of the federal government throughout the 1970s. Uh, uh, he, since he confirmed uh, the the case of um, Olson, it seems to eat, lend even more credence to the to the conclusion. It was yeah. Uh, I this isn't really it's not really a show you can spoil because it's not really a show about big yeah. reveals so much as it is about Olson's son and his obsession. And so it's probably I don't think it's really spoiling it by saying that it's oh. that Seymour Hersh yeah comes and. Uh, uh, he he confirms it, but he can't. He says he can't publish it because he doesn't have a second source, and he can't yeah. reveal the information he has yes. without compromising yes. his source, which is so frustrating for the viewer. Uh, but you know, of course, as with much of Errol Morris's stuff, it's uh, kind of a meditation on what is knowable and mm -hmm. all that. Uh, I, I you you mentioned earlier to me ted that you had a uh uh that there was a time when when you were a bit of a conspiracy nut uh conspiracy <laughs> theorist uh i was wondering if you could share with us about that a little bit but when i was young and irresponsible i was young and irresponsible i guess that's the uh <laughs> i tend to embrace the idea that individual actions across time uh create uh history today uh but when i was 16 years old the oliver stone movie came out um jfk and uh i was fascinated with that we um i had a friend of mine and we were very um fascinated with the the um the array of books that came out uh, subscribing to the to, to a conspiracy in the uh kennedy assassination i mean we were I was a very, I was a nerd in high school and um, uh, we were, we decided to spend our time uh, uh, looking at the, the Kennedy assassination on, on our February vacations. Uh, we went to all the, the Kennedy assassination conventions in, in Harvard Square and we, um, we read all the, the books by uh, Mark Lane and um, uh, uh, Jim Mars and um, we were these two nerdy guys who were ready to solve the solve the case. It was just a question of um, uh, would our teachers give us enough time to do it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were we were and, and of course they kind of fit the time. It was the time of um, oh, it was the time of X Files, and um, so we, we it was kind of cool to be that you know the guys like. Um, the lone gunman from the from the X Files series, you know, and uh, trained as an historian, I tend to uh, reject those arguments and mm -hmm. look for the the the, you know, the simpler way of, of of describing things. Yeah, the kind of Occam's razor approach. Yeah, uh, kind of, and and in general, just seeing that uh, uh, people are people and governments are made of human beings and, mm -hmm. and and just to 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 think that a government could possibly even sustain such a conspiracy and keep it secret uh yeah. kind of falls apart when you when you know more about yeah. them and and just you know and when you look at the kennedy assassination really nothing has come forward that suggests the um you know that, that there was an alternative version from a lone assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald, shooting the president, and and I think that that's that's probably the the case. Well, uh, before we're we're gonna do a bit of a deep dive into all that, um, I did want to say I too I actually came to the the JFK assassination through Jim Mars's book Crossfire, which someone oh, yeah. Yeah. lent me. Actually, I think I checked it out. <laughs> from uh, the library at Bolton High School. I think they had it at, at my high school library, and I checked it out. And I ate it up. And oh, yeah. and then I watched 
Oliver Stone's JFK, and you know, it's a very well done movie. And um, I, I think, I mean, obviously, there's the the appeal of conspiracy theories is that they kind of bring order to a world that seems chaotic. And mm-hmm. but honestly, I think for me, maybe because you know, like you, you know, I it, I'm not someone who was there in 63 and like had this trauma that had to be explained it, it, it was it's that conspiracy theories are, are just fun and yeah. all the characters and the i mean jim mars's book supposes that you know about 15 different groups were somehow uh, involved uh groups that oh, hated yeah. each other like yeah. you know uh the cia and the communists and castro and the anti-Castro Cubans, and they all did it. And uh, I think it's a kind of folk history. It's, uh, I mean, really, the impulse that leads one into conspiracy theories isn't that different from the impulse that leads one in. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's stuff that you, that anyone can do. It's a kind yeah. of more, uh, uh, if you don't have the training, you know, to do rigorous scholarship, it, it's a way to, you know, channel that same impulse. And, and and it's a way to build community. You bring together people from different backgrounds, different classes and different regions. I mean, everybody's holding the same view of things and the same fears. And they uh, they speak the same language. They when they talk about the Zabruder film, they they talk about the, you know, the individual frames as. Um, I think F two thirteen would be a frame from the Zabruder film, <laughs> or um, LHO is the is the uh, the code name for Lee Harvey Oswald at the who, who worked at the TSBD, the Texas School Book Depository. They have the same uh, just wow. mannerisms, and, and, and uh, that that is compelling. It brings people together. I think that's the the uh, the knit. I, I, I mean, that sounds almost like, uh, you know, comic book fans. Com- yeah. Uh, yeah. Knowing all the arcane details from of the their universes. I didn't know that they're really like these conventions. It, you said that you went to conventions? Uh, I don't know if, they, if they're around anymore, but, but there were, um, I mean, I, I, we took off school for, these, for a couple of these conventions uh, when, at Emerson, where uh, Jim Mars came and spoke. Yeah. Um, and it was um, uh, it was Robert Groden there who was another conspiracy um, buff, and um, it it it's a these folks who um, you know I, I think that the uh, Catherine Olmsted the historian does a little bit of work on it in her book uh, Real Enemies, but these folks um, of the the researchers of the of the um, the assassination community, they were a grassroots group who um, really just by by looking at the evidence, by looking at the Zabruder film, by exchanging letters, uh, they built their own community and uh, they weren't wealthy. They didn't have the, um, unlike the a prior uh, conspiracy group, say in the, um, the 1930s and 1940s, um, the um, um, the um, the anti Roosevelt isolationist groups. These were very um, they, these were not affluent people, but they were graduate graduate students, teachers, college some college professors, businessmen, and they built up a community. They they passed on information to each other. Uh, the internet has really helped them, uh, and they still think that they can, you know, d- discover uh, a truth that's they can discover the truth if they dig a little harder and uh, look mm-hmm. at enough grainy photos of the of um, the all the pictures that were in Dealey Plaza that day. I guess not to not to um, denigrate them or anything. Right. Well, I guess I don't know how much you want to go into November twenty second, uh, nineteen sixty three, yeah. but I I, I guess. I guess we can just sort of briefly say what you what you think happened on November twenty second, and then we can get into the sure. kind of 
immediate aftermath of it and the things that lead to the spread of these theories? Uh, well, I, 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 I think that as far as the assassination, it was a, um, um, an incident where a, an individual who uh, was alienated from society, um, who believed that he could, despite his, um, his very uh, poor origins, could rise to power and be a significant influence in this country's history. Um, and he made the decision that uh, Kennedy, since he was passing his building that day, since he was a, um, an ex-Marine who was a sharpshooter, um, had an opportunity to be um, an important figure and to possibly change the course of American history or world history. I think Oswald did see that. I think he did it on his own because he was the kind of person who did things on his own. He did things very successfully on his own. He uh, was able to get into uh, Russia on his own. He was able to become a Marine on his own. He got his wife out of Russia, uh, came home, um, got, a, um, got a job at the Texas School Buck Depository, and he was, um, he was, a, he, he was living a miserable life, and he decided that his only opportunity for uh, infamy was to uh, take advantage uh, uh, of this particular opportunity, this tragedy that he that he committed, and I think that's that's the story. Well, America here's a question ended. for you. Yeah. Uh, why why then did he say he was a patsy? Well, I think we don't. We th these are the questions we'll just never know. Um, he. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Because if he wanted this fame, then why would he just take the credit for it? Well, I think that after the after the um, the Tippett murder, um, he was sort of seen as he, he sort of said that he couldn't make a great speech about the about the act. That he he I think that he saw himself as a as a possible political leader who could who could make a speech or have the big trial if he if he somehow um, he, he either got would get away with it or he would have the biggest trial of the century and I think he decided that um, if he got caught he could make the big speech um, about his uh, supposed Marxist ideology and why he did it um, and um, I, I, I just, I, I, after he shot um, a policeman, I, I just don't think anybody was willing to listen to him. And I think that he realized that he had lost. Hmm. I see. He wouldn't have that opportunity to make the make the the great speech or or yeah. do. So then know. he's then he has to sort of change uh, his plan. Yeah, it gets just kind of desperate. Yeah, and then it's is a moment, I mean, it's a moment in time yeah. where he, I think, he just determined that he had an opportunity to do something. Um, he was living a miserable life, and he um, he he concluded that he could do it mm -hmm. um, based on his um, based on his his um, his shooting ability, his his. Um, um, his position in the in the book depository and possibly get away with it. Yeah. Uh, but do you think Jack Ruby was similar to Oswald? No, I, I, I think Ruby. I think the story with Ruby is a. Uh, it it's a it's. I, I think Ruby, he, when he arrived at the jail, he left his dog in the car, and supposedly he was. Um, uh, supposedly he was just going to mail a telegram. I think that was on the whim. That was just a, um, I think Jack Ruby was a very uh, unstable individual and, and uh, like Oswald was, of course, but Jack Ruby was an unstable individual and made that decision at, at that particular move, moment. Um, 
uh, again, he had an opportunity because he was in the he was in walking around for whatever reason. He was walking within three feet of Oswald the whole weekend. Um, the the security around Oswald was just so terrible that weekend. Uh, but uh, I, I don't I don't think he had any other uh, Confederates along with him. I think it was he was a um, uh, another troubled individual who who uh, just made made it made that decision. Well, um, pretty quickly, uh, people come to doubt that Oswald actor alone, or, or or even that Ruby was just you know uh, on, on a whim, and I. I th- it seems to me that there's kind of two big moments where decisions are made and they're Mm -hmm. understandable ones uh, that then uh, leave room for wilder and wilder theories. And I'm thinking of the autopsy of of JFK. And I'm also thinking of just the, the Warren commission in general, especially the, the relationship between intelligence community and and the Warren Commission. I wonder if yeah. you can get into those for a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think I think I think you hit it. Um, it's the Ruby murder of Oswald. That is I think at the at the time when when um, the, the evidence was overwhelming against Oswald. They found case um, the, the the bullet casings on the floor of the of the um, the, the the sixth floor of the depository. They found um, uh, somebody who would who matched the description of the individual who shot J.D. Tippett. Uh, they found Oswald's Oswald holding the rifle um, in a picture. the The rifle had been sent to him on um, using a surname, using a name um, A. Heidel. Uh, they were able to trace trace the rifle as well as the um, um, the revolver to him. They found a handprint. A palm print, that is, on Oswald. So it's, the evidence is pretty overwhelming. But when Oswald shoots, um, when, when when Ruby shoots Oswald, that changes everything in the minds of the American people, um, because I think they're willing to accept the fact that Oswald did it prior to that. But then you introduce um, you introduce uh, a individual at um, in, in the middle of a police station, uh, there are some serious questions. And I think in, in that during the course of that weekend, the, the belief in a conspiracy theory went up to 60 percent. Oh, wow. Uh, went up to 60 percent. And when when Ruby killed Oswald, officials decided that um, they are going to have to put together a report that would name Oswald as the lone assassin. And um, because of the fact that Americans began thinking that, that, that Oswald might have been part of a larger conspiracy, um, was he really the little, the silly little communist, as, um, as Jackie Kennedy said, or was he part of something bigger? And I think that um, even, even some of the officials like... Um, Lyndon Johnson or um, uh, Richard Helms, who was in the, the CIA, even Robert Kennedy began to suspect that uh, maybe this was something larger. And it was um, it was Nicholas Katzenbach, who was the uh, running the Justice Department uh, while Robert Kennedy was mourning. And uh, the, the Katzenbach uh, memo uh, said that the government really doesn't want to have a investigation, a real investigation, because it could un- uncover a significant number of things. We have, Katzenbach told Johnson that we have to convince the public that Oswald was the assassin, um, that he had no Confederates, that he had no accomplices. And the evidence was so powerful and conclusive that if he had gone to trial, he would be convicted, uh, and he would be um, he, he would be killed. So 
Johnson appoints this Blue Ribbon Commission, the Warren Commission, as everybody knows, um, comprised of Earl Warren. Uh, now, Earl Warren doesn't want to do it initially, but LBJ, who uses the LBJ treatment on, um, on Warren, convinces him that uh, you have to do it. Uh, so he or else it would be a World War III, right? He doesn't he yes. use that line a lot. Yes, I mean th this is this is the, these are the stakes, as Johnson said. Um, this, if it gets out there that Johnson that Oswald is um, involved with with, with a um, with communists, um, LBJ thought that he would have to go to war with Russia, and it could. I mean, go if it came out that Oswald was involved with communists. Well, if, if there was. If the public began to believe that Oswald was a uh, did this for the purpose of politically oriented assassination, if this was not just a lone nut who had um, who, had, who had lost it, but a politically motivated assassination, um, Johnson would be in a tough position, and Johnson realized that. In order to quash that, um, he realizes that he needs to follow Katzenbach's advice and convince the public that, yes, um, that we have the man, we have Oswald, and he did it. Um, so, uh, And it seems to me that, Co how do you say, Co Kotzenbach? Kotzenbach? Uh, Kotzenbach, yes. It seems to me that he's saying, look, like we, we really do think the Oswald did it alone. Yeah. But, this, but an investigation... Uh that didn't leave any stone unturned, that followed every lead, would end up unearthing stuff that we don't want unearthed. Well, is that more or less his? Well, that's, that's, I would say that in part, Johnson had his suspicions. Johnson, mm -hmm. first of all, thought that um, the North Vietnamese, um, excuse me, the, um, the South, South Vietnamese yeah. had um, killed Kennedy because uh, ZM was assassinated just a few weeks earlier. And uh, Johnson concluded that ZM got to Kennedy uh, before um, 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 and ZM got to Kennedy. Uh, they somehow got to Kennedy afterwards. And then there was the suggestion uh, that it was Castro. Now, um, the, the Kennedy administration had been uh, led by Robert Kennedy in uh, at least eight uh, assassination attempts on Castro's life. At the moment of President Kennedy's um, assassination in Dallas, there was a CIA, CIA official in Paris, and he was receiving a, um, a pen that contained a, um, it, it, it contained a, a shot that, that could inject Castro with, a, with something that could kill him. Um, so Kennedy, Johnson was afraid that somehow Carol got to Kennedy first. So Johnson was a good as well. Um, so uh, he puts together, regardless, he, does, he knows the public can't right. have these doubts. Um, he realizes it's not healthy for a, for a pup republic to have these types of doubts. So regardless of how he feels about it, which he never, he never really embraced the Warren Commission, um, you had to have some type of a blue ribbon commission that would convince the people that um, things are okay. It, 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 it's, um, it's Oswald who did it, so we can move on. And he put together a, a respectable, what he saw as a respectable group. And he thought that he could use this group to convince the American people um, that this is what happened. And that would be the end of it. That's what he thought. Yeah. After the release of the Warren Commission, uh, this, this is, this is a, 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 an amazing thing. The, the, ama the um, American people have a significant amount of faith in their government. Uh, at the time of the Tonkin Gulf Resolution, 1964, Americans believe with an 80 percent assurance that the um, that the American public will do the right thing most of the time. Um, so this is this works, according to Johnson, at least. 
by 1964. Um, it's not going to work forever, though. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, I wonder if you could get in, tell me a little bit about what happens in the autopsy, because I think that's the other place where, you yeah. know, some, some decisions are made that, that, you know, help explain these crazier theories. Yeah. Um, the, the, um, the aut there was an autopsy uh, completed uh, during the, um, the night of the assassination. Uh, it was completed um, at Walter Reed Hospital. Uh, President Kennedy was a uh, was a uh, was in the Navy, and it was the request that um, it was the request of Jacqueline Kennedy that the um, the president uh, that the autopsy occur at Walter Reed. Uh, the uh, the the autopsy at at, at the, the um, Walter Reed Naval Hospital at Bethesda. Uh, was a botched uh, job, and it led to, um, unfortunately, it led to theories of, of cons conspiracy thereafter. Uh, the, the autopsy was conducted by somebody by the name of James Humes, uh, and throughout the course of the autopsy, Dr. Humes was getting significant amount of pressure um, from the Kennedy family. Uh, the understandably, un, 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 to be honest, understandably, the um, this goes into like uh, attorney general. They didn't want to be revealed that he had Addington's and yeah, it, they they didn't want to disclose the fact that he had that he had venereal diseases, that he had Addison's disease. Addison's. Uh, they didn't want to disclose the fact of how bad his back was. Um, and so they were getting a lot of, the, the doctors were getting a lot of pressure, a lot of calls down into that room um, to, to finish the job. And, and the problem was um, the, the pathologist didn't um, dissect the path of the, of the bullet wound. They also didn't do a, a few other things. Um, they, they didn't know at the time when they were when they were trying to dissect the path of the of the bullet wound in the back, that there was an exit wound in the neck, um, they thought that it was just a, a, a tracheotomy, but they didn't realize that the the um, there was an exit wound in the um, in the neck. Oh, so when they um, saw the hole in his neck, they just thought he had a tracheotomy done. Yeah, they just thought it was a trach. They just thought it was a trach. Uh, and so they didn't, they never found an exit wound in the neck because um, they, they didn't know that the um, um, they didn't know that the doctors had um, um, had, had not done tracheotomy also. had not done the had yeah. not done well, uh, well they 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 saw that they they saw the trach but they didn't see that underneath that was the exit wound so it really oh bothered, I see it really bothered the uh, when when they were writing up the report. Um, um, so an FBI report is written, and um, it did it did not know um, it did not know that there was um, an exit wound uh, in the neck. And here's what happened: um, the, the FBI report said that the bullet wound went into Kennedy's body, and then it fell out in a, in a stretcher. Um, it fell out his, of his back on a stretcher. So there was. There were three shots. There were three shots. One hit Kennedy in the back, according to the FBI. One hit Connolly, and the other hit JFK in the head. Um, um, but the problem was the Warren Commission didn't include this this false FBI report um, uh, in the official version, and. The report ultimately came out. A graduate student at, at um, UC Berkeley found this in the National Archives, and it creates this big controversy. Uh, so it, it it would suggest that the Warren Commission was false in suggesting um, that the single bullet theory was correct. Does I see. So people 
people can point to this actually it, it was a it was an FBI report that was falsified just to somehow make sense of the fact that they couldn't find an exit wound. Mm -hmm. uh, people point to that then as evidence that that there there was a second gunman essentially, right? Essentially, essentially, it, they were basically if the if the um, if the FBI determined that the um, there was no. Um, exit wound in the back then it would ref it, then it would refute the single bullet theory which okay. suggests that the the um the shot um went into the back and then came out of the neck and then went into governor Con Connolly. if 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 it if they were unable to trace the path of that bullet wound in the back then you know, there's just one shot to Kennedy, and, and Kennedy and, and um, Connolly are hit by separate shots. You know, here's a question I have about this second gunman theory is, do we have precedent otherwise for using two gunmen to assassinate someone in, in any country? Or, you know, uh, it seems to me if you're if you're wanting to assassinate the president and you have the ability to have this one person shoot them and then run away and not get caught. Why do you even need to bother having Oswald? You know, I don't, I, I guess if you're just applying Occam's razor, I don't see what would be the use in having a second gunman, but I don't know. I, 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 haven't, I haven't thought of that. I, um, the, um, <clears throat> um, but I, I just, I, I just, huh, anyway. the way I look at it is um, the, um, it, it bullets do funny things and yeah. you know it, it's um it, i know there's been pretty compelling in you know in the investigations i forget where it was published maybe it was national geographic yeah. showing pretty convincingly that yeah the bullet could have done that because they yeah. they when it when a bullet enters a human body it can be pretty un unpredictable mm -hmm. it goes um i want to you, you mentioned this earlier. Uh, well, we, we, we talked earlier and our we actually had our conversation uh, and ended up getting erased uh, from a hard drive. So we're, we're, we're talking again, but which I, I maintain uh, is not a coincidence. Uh, <laughs> someone out there doesn't want us to have this conversation. But... Um, hmm. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Jim Garrison. Jim Garrison. It seems to me that with Jim Garrison, you have a pivot from a kind of more, I guess, right-wing narrative. A, a narrative that has more in common with earlier right-wing anti-communist theories. You know, the theory that it was the Soviets or the, or the Cubans, something like that. It shifts from that to a left-wing theory that it was uh, that it was the CIA or the, the military-industrial complex, and I think really that's become the more popular theory these days. Yeah, uh, and, and I, I wanted to. I, I did a little bit of reading on this. I want to go in, into this a bit about yeah. how. Uh, Jim Garrison's theory actually has a lot to do with Soviet disinformation. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Max Holland, who mm -hmm. wrote, has written about this some, and we'll have a couple links. There's one that is uh, open access actually on the CIA website, and then there's another that was published in the Wilson Quarterly, which is on JSTOR, but... Uh, he finds pretty compelling evidence that it was KG. It was a KGB dis disinformation campaign that led to Jim Garrison's uh, uh, sort of theory of the CIA being behind. And we should say Jim Garrison was a what was the district attorney in New Orleans? Is that right? He was a district attorney, and uh, they called him the jo the Jolly Green Giant. He was like six six foot six. Uh, and and he was a uh, he was a district attorney in New Orleans, and uh, he had, and he was 
he made kind of a name of himself as as a kind of enemy of of the kind of gay underworld of New yeah. Orleans. He, he did a he lot was of Louisiana populist. He was a yeah. he was kind of in line with it with a Huey Long type Louisiana populist and and um, he, a lot of his early cases he um, he um, persecuted um, prosecuted and persecuted <laughs> yeah. the um, um, uh, gays in um, the um, in New Orleans and in, in, and, and, he, and he yeah. goes for Clay Shaw. He starts yeah. who's played by we should say uh, Jim Garrison is is Kevin Costner in the Oliver Stone movie and Clay Shaw is Tommy Lee Jones and Clay Shaw was he was just kind of a socialite in New Orleans he played a yeah. part in restoring the French Quarter he was a friend of Tennessee Williams and and he was he was gay which I, I think was sort of an open secret yeah. in New Orleans and he pins Jim Garrison pins Clay Shaw as being involved in the assassination and saying that it was like a homosexual thrill kill. Yeah. Um, yeah. Original theory. And then, and we know this because of a diary kept by a friend of Jim Garrison's. Mm -hmm. Then he comes across a story in like some French leftist newspaper uh, saying that Clay Shaw was somehow involved with the CIA. And that French newspaper actually got its story from an Italian leftist wow. newspaper. I didn't know that, yeah. Uh, an Italian leftist newspaper that printed the story about, because Clay Shaw had been involved with uh, the CMC, the, which was kind of a, a predecessor to uh, the European Union. I mean, it was something that was working towards the European common market. And he'd been to Rome, worked with this company called the CMC, and this Italian newspaper said that CM CMC was really just uh, a cover for the CIA. Mm -hmm. And so Clay Shaw equals CIA, so, and CIA equals killing Kennedy. And we, we now know, because of documents came out in 1999, after the fall of the Soviet Union, that that story in the Italian newspaper was planted by the soviets yeah yeah because they there's a document from some kgb files saying that they conducted a series of disinformation operations and one such emplacement was in new york through paisa Serra. Yeah. and we anyway and, and think about think about the effect of that i mean think about the effect of that uh th think about how many americans today believe the preposterous theory that, that somehow JFK was assassinated because he wanted to go into Vietnam. That's completely contrary to his, um, his foreign policy. He was a Cold Warrior um, who, who, you know, who proposed that there was a missile gap. He, he was even more insistent in um, assassinating Castro than his um, successor, Lyndon Johnson. Um, and I don't think that there was any determination that Kennedy wanted to get out of Vietnam at that time. So the impact on that was significant on the American public. Many Americans believe that today. So that was one of the a, a very powerful um, uh, piece of propaganda by the KGB. Sorry, I missed that last thing you said. You said that was a very powerful... It, that was a very powerful and effective um, piece of misinformation that was false by the KGB. This, there's, it, it's, high, it's preposterous that JFK was um, killed because of Vietnam. And I think that, that's, that that was the driving force behind that, um, behind that, that KGB effort uh, to say that Kennedy was going to get out of Vietnam... And it was the CIA that um, that did it, and um, and the Garrison Garrison followed that argument that it was it had to do with Vietnam, and that's why he was killed. Um, unfortunately, it, it's, it's why do you? Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's sort of the driving story of Oliver Stone's movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is is it all goes back to Vietnam and JFK mm -hmm. was. And I, I think I think Gore Vidal referred to this as the gospel, according to Oliver Stone, the, this idea that JFK was 
about to do that. Uh, I, I get. Why do you think Oliver Stone or others want to believe that about John F. Kennedy when there's so little evidence for well, it? Oliver Stone's. Um, or what, what is there any evidence for it at all? Or no, I mean, I, I think all the evidence suggests that the um, the decision was either undecided. Um, and it, it would have been held off until the, after the election. Um, and, and just based on his um, status as a cold warrior, um, even though there was a shift away from that, that type of um, jingoism in, in, um, in the fall of 1963, I, I don't think he had any firm commitments to um, extirpate American troops from, um, from Vietnam at that particular point. Um, the, so I guess there, there is something about JFK, maybe because, because he was assassinated, where we can project onto things. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, the, you, you, they they suggest the American um, university speech. They ex, they suggest the um, the nuclear test ban treaty is providing evidence, um, but none of that is. Um, Proof that you know there was a firm commitment on what to do with Vietnam um, at that point. We'll never know that one. Yeah. yeah we'll, uh, it sort of reminds me of of it kind of reminds me of the after Lincoln being assassinated, the sort of ideas of oh, if he had lived, then yeah, you know, Reconstruction would have been. Everyone singing kumbaya, kumbaya and, um, yeah. But you know, it, it was Lyndon Johnson though who um, was the master of the Senate, as, as Robert Caro said. And I don't think JFK could get the Civil Rights Act passed with the um, the skill that Johnson was able to do um, in '64. I think he would have had a, still a difficult time getting. Um, the um, getting the, the legislative achievements that Lyndon Johnson uh, was able to uh, was able to get. He, he was just he came into that office with, um, with with a talent for knowing the Senate and a talent for driving legislation. And he he managed to get the um, the most probably the most important piece of legislation passed in the last half century, the Civil Rights Act, as well as the Voting Rights Act. I mean, it's my perception as well that he was just kind of more personally, ideologically committed to that than Kennedy yeah. was. Yeah. I think, you know, his being from Texas and, as, you know, he often cited his experience in teaching Hispanic kids in South Texas yeah. when he was a young man. And, and I, he, I just he, think he really believed it was the right thing to do and was willing to pay a lot of political capital that Kennedy might not have been. I don't know. And he either knew how to count the votes, or he made sure that anybody who worked for him needed to, knew how to <laughs> count the vote. Know how to do that, and I yeah. think that that, um, that he was um, so effective in that um, in '64 and '65. Unfortunately, Vietnam becomes an albatross for him. Yeah. Well, you know, so I, I, my, my baby boy is probably about to wake up any minute. I would love to have you, because we also want to get into sort of what happens after Jim Garrison with the church oh, yeah. committee, and I think we could have a whole other episode. Let's do yeah. it. Okay. Let's well, it. let me ask you then real quick before we go, um, what you make of, while we're talking about LBJ, what do you make of kind of, how to put it, it just seems like he's undergoing a strange time in american imagination right now yeah, yeah. because there there was a time when his name was about sure. as <laughs> you know the american left he was you know villainized uh, yeah. for vietnam and yeah and now he seems to be i don't know it, people often cite him as oh you know if only we had someone like him now who could really get stuff done i don't know it's it's pretty it remarkable it reminds me of what it reminds me of what one of, um, with the exception of Vietnam, of course, but it reminds me of what one of Lincoln's cabinet members says. Now he belongs to the ages. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, 
it, it it's the work of historians. It's the work of Carol, really. But um, I think that the, um, the the LBJ Library was very transparent through the years, and they realized that this presidency um, would benefit if trans if if the sun shone on the documents in the in the LBJ Library and. Hmm. Um, that there's well, we can't go any further down, and that we can only go up. This was the uh, was the attitude, and even even in the '90s, he was um, he he wasn't really seen as a uh, um, at, as one of the greats. But now, as we look back, he's he is he's moving into the into the area of a, of greatness. He's well, he, he's he's moving up the um, yeah. He's ahead of Kennedy now. He's yeah, Kennedy. I'd say Kennedy's image has. I think as as I mean K- Kennedy, just because of the place he had for a particular generation in their imagination, as uh, as that sort of dissipates, I think his. Not that he was necessarily a bad president. It's just, it's just you know, he was only around for so yeah. long, and yeah. it, it almost makes me wonder. You know, I mean, James Garfield was beloved and was this mm-hmm. kind of young, charismatic and in, intelligent president, and he was lauded for a while after he was assassinated. But now, I just wonder if Kennedy's going to occupy a similar place in fifty years um, as uh, Garfield. I, I think that he's going to get a tremendous amount of credit for the moonshot. I True. think. And the it, people, yeah, sorry, you know there'll be there'll be um, there'll be few people. You know if we're if we get into the if we get into the thirty first century, uh, there'll be a few presidents that we remember in the twentieth the uh, in the twentieth century, and 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 he'll be um, remembered as the um, as the one who said we shall go to the moon. I think that that's that is um, because hopefully we will be exploring the the stars, um, but. Um, as far as the social legislation, Lyndon Johnson is there with, um, uh, he, he's right up there with, um, I don't know, we're, we're definitely top 10 now, yeah. I, would, I would think. Well, and coming back to Errol Morris, I don't know if you've seen The Fog of War, the documentary about Robert McNamara, mm-hmm. but I know, you know, McNamara makes the makes the case that, you know, it's one thing to criticize LBJ's decisions in, in the Vietnam War, but also keep in mind that there are a lot of voices telling him to just nuke them uh, and to, or to, you know, invade China or, yeah. um, you know. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you go, and sure. I hope we can get together again soon and uh, sure. and... As as the talk talk through the various other transmutations that the Kennedy assassination mythos takes. Um, Remember that the fiftieth anniversary of the King assassination is is coming up, so we could talk about that in light of uh, Contelpro. True, and uh, Robert Kennedy and the Robert okay. Kennedy assassination. All right. Well, it's a date then. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, and uh, people can friend you on Facebook. You're oh, Edward sure. H. Miller, and you you're also t- what's your Twitter handle? It's um, I forget that one. I think it's um, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, are you E H underscore Miller? Is that yes? Right? That's right. That's okay. one. And of course, or you I'm, can buy the, the Nut Country book. <laughs> or you can buy Nut Country. Uh, yes. University of Chicago Press. There is a link uh, below this video. Uh, you can also check out my stuff. I have not written. I've written about. I've written a little bit about uh, 666 conspiracy theories. So if you want to check that out, you can as well uh, at at uh, William at um, wrblack.com. And I also tweet it at William R. Black. All right. Well, thank you, Ted. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this. Me too.